Dear learners, this session is dedicated to discussion on facilitation of a travel agency. After going through this, we will be able to understand what is the function of a travel agency under the facilitation function. So first of all, let us understand that as we all understand that there are tourists who make arrangements on their own, who prepare their own itineraries and travel on their own and make all the necessary facilitation arrangements also on their own. However, there are a set of tourists who like institutionalized travel. They want to make their travel through a travel agency. They want everything organized and maybe they don't have enough information or they don't want to take all the hassle of doing all the things on their own. So they make their arrangements through a travel agency. So the first facilitation function of a travel agency is the of arranging of passports for the travelers who want to travel internationally. So we need to understand what a passport is and we also need to understand that passport is the generally the people themselves they may have their own passports then it is not a problem for the company to arrange for the passport but sometimes pass travel companies also help if he is a layman he has no knowledge of how to make a passport how to go about it then he may seek the assistance of a travel agency. Let us understand what a passport is. So, passport is an official document issued by the competent authority to the national citizens as verification of the citizenship. It is also a permit to leave one's own country and turn back. It is a requisite for international travel. So, whenever you are traveling, it is 100% required in India. Uh, it is issued by the President of India. The, it, it has the bearing of the President of India's signature and various RPUs, regional passport offices, give it. So, the Passport, they have numeric of alphanumeric designations assigned by issuing authority at the last page. Passport standards are recommended to national government by International Civil Aviation Organization. We have different kinds of passport, but basic is the standard passport, which is a booklet of 36 pages, and we have the jumbo passport, which is 60 pages for people who travel heavily or who are basically business travelers also. So passports would always bear a seven digit passport number which is and passport is generally issued with 10 years validity. So passport as I just discussed with you that is a very important document and without which you cannot travel internationally. The visa is embossed on the passport unless until it is a paper visa. Types of passports, different passports are there. We have the regular passport which is for the uh, regular citizens which is in navy blue in color it is also called as ordinary passport which is issued for ordinary travel such as vacations and business trips which may be 36 or 60 pages by respective regional passport offices then we have diplomatic passports which are maroon in color which are issued to indian diplomats by ministry of external affairs and we have the official passports which is white in color which is issued to individuals representing the Indian government on official business. So you might, uh, if you are a uh, government servant, so you might get the in your apply going on official visit. So officially, you might be issued by the Ministry of External Affairs itself. You might not have to go through the travel agency, and same is the case with diplomatic passport. But for regular passport, sometimes they might assist you. Sometimes you might have to do on your own only. That depends from company to company. Besides this. Uh, we have the other passports which are the which is the biometric passport that is also another which is also called as e-passport now it is issued now it has been issued recently and uh, th this was the first one it was issued to Pratibha Patil who was the uh, president of India at one point of time uh, and uh, this was created by the IIT uh, people IIT alumni and uh, in this there is a small chip which saves all your data related to your travel now next let's discuss the what are the things in the uh, next uh, uh, is the passport holder identity uh, photo of passport uh, holder signature all, all these are so certain details are there the nationality date of issue date of expiry of passport 
one's name the surname passport number these are all important aspects which have to be covered in a passport plus the observation may be about your any um, a mark birthmark which you know you might have to give uh, while making up of passport so the other personal information may lead to the closing end uh, may contain the following information name of the father name of mother name of spouse address old passport number if any file number etc so as i discussed uh, e passport biometric passport it is for diplomatic passport holders in india and abroad and it was designed by the central passport of organization the indian security plus iit kanpur students Contains a security chip with all the personal data and digital images. So next is visa. So mainly, generally, what happens is that most of the companies they prefer that you get your own passport made, but they would assist you with the visa. So what is visa? Visa is visitors' intended stay abroad. It is an entry in a passport or other travel document made by a consular official of a government. to indicate that the bearer has been granted the authority to enter or re-enter another country it specifies the authorized length of stay the period of validity and number of entries allowed during that period so basically visa for traveling to any country of the world you need to have visa most of the countries you require visa to travel to so visa it, there are different regulations for visa some visas might be uh, there are different types of visas and they might be given for different duration of time and they might be given uh, in different duration of timing also some visas just take 3 day working days two working days some visas take 15 days or uh, a week's time 20 days that depends from country to country every country has its own regulations for visas so let us discuss the different types of visas before that i want to tell you that there are visa issuing organizations uh, we have embassy consulate high commission and vfs embassy basically they are embassies are generally based in the capitals of the countries and embassies they um, they issue the uh, visas uh, to the people who uh, who submit all the required documents and consulates uh, are generally in on in the cities in the major cities of a country uh, and uh, they, they are offshoots of an embassy and in the high commission they basically which are the commission the countries which have been ruled by the britishers they are the high commissions in india vfs stands for visa facilitation services when you submit uh, your documents to vfs VFS in turn submits it to the embassy and embassy ultimately gives the visa so the VFS is basically just a collection center of your documents they check if your documents any documents are missing they will inform you they will collect the payment from you and they will send it to the embassy embassies do not take the visas do not issue the visa directly to the clients or to the travel agents because of the huge rush involved so everything comes to the embassy to the vfs and embassy informs the vfs that the vfs uh, the visa is granted to the person so uh, the vfs collects the passport from the embassy and in turn uh, gives returns back the passports and the documents with the visa to the concerned travelers who are traveling so we have different types of visas we have tourist visa which is for 6 months only we have transit visa which is valid for 15 days business visa which is for 5 years and temporary workers visa student visa journalist visa working holiday visa missionary visa medical visa conference visa research visa fiance visa visa on arrival basically these visas are visas depending upon your purpose of travel many countries have initiated the concept of visa on arrival to to facilitate travel so there you don't have to you have a choice whether you take the visa from your own country or when you reach there airport their immigration officer will grant you with the visa provided you, you they do not suspect you in any way you clear all the uh, checks so they will issue you a uh, grant you the visa on arrival once you reach the destination so countries like thailand maldives indonesia mauritius sri lanka they are giving visa on arrival so you, once you reach the airport you stand in a queue and visit the immigration officers and uh, and after collecting your luggage and uh, there they grant you the visa 
uh, but if they don't find you uh, if they uh, have any kind of suspect about you then they may detain you or they may send you back to your country so this visa on arrival uh, is a step taken towards increasing tourism india is has also initiated this visa on arrival concept so uh, to many countries of the world so that more and more of tourists are coming more of the following countries it started with five countries then it came to the 11 countries now so many countries are there more than 100 k countries are given in uh, visa on arrival for india but there are a lot of uh, uh, there are a lot of uh, terms and conditions attached with it basically no you only if you are coming for the uh, your uh, the sightseeing purpose tourism purpose you can be granted for business so visa you have to come through regular channel uh through to the uh, to the indian embassy in the concerned country then there are uh, other conditions also which follow uh, the next uh, is uh, the who do not have a residence or occupation in india who hold a passport with a minimum 6 months validity or who is a person of some of a short financial standing who is most considered as undesirable who is not considered as an undesirable person is not uh the subject of a blacklist or any warning circular or other restrictive list there are different types of visas we have single entry visa double entry multiple well, and uh, single means you you can only travel to the country once on that single entry visa double is you leave that country come back again on that double entry visa multiple is as maintained like schengen visa validity is you cannot stay in that uh, country for whenever you want to go you cannot go to that country there is a validity there is a time limit in within which you must visit that country that is called as the validity period of stay or length of stay is the time for maximum how many days you can stay in that country you cannot stay endlessly in that country so every country uh, suggests its length of stay but uh, mostly just like schengen visa and uh, uh, or uh, many like uh, us visa you can visa they are very strict about these rules and they generally give you visas depending upon your itinerary which they see checking of visa by the travel agency is most important as i said they help you with the visa way to get the visa of different countries when you are making travel arrangements to them so they you once the visa has come been issued by the embassy and you go and collect it from the vfs now when it comes to you in your travel company and being a visa officer these are the following things which you need to check as being a travel agency staff you must check that the name is correctly spelled on the visa the passport number is correct it matches with the passport number mentioned in the first page and the last page the date of birth date of expiry is uh, is uh, the date of expiry is clear, uh, clearly mentioned and the validity and entry is correct that is very important validity is so important that uh for how, uh, for the time during which you want to go it is during that time only you can travel and your entry you must also check and the length of stay is also very important under the facilitation function of a travel agency it is also the responsibility of a travel agency to inform the tourists about the health regulations if any to the countries they are visiting so different countries may have different rules of vaccination before you visit them so some of the uh, rules or uh, uh, so some of the diseases against which vaccination is a must are yellow fever and cholera so precautionary vaccination are mandatory for some countries as recommended by world health organization for yellow fever and cholera infected zones vaccination have to be endorsed as a booklet as prescribed by who the need for health certificates depends from where pax has come and whether he has stayed for some time in an infected area Information for yellow fever vaccination certificate uh, it is mentioned generally in a tim that is a travel information manual and it is mandatory for all person including infant who have been traveling to the following countries even in transit even if you are traveling to africa like in places like in angola benin burkina faso burundi cameroon central african republic uh, chad congo democratic republic of congo the equatorial guinea all these places if you are traveling to so vaccination is a must uh, there has been a change in the rule in the yellow fever vaccination earlier it was every 10 years it expires and uh, you have to get it changed but now you have to get it revaccinated but now uh, if you have taken the vaccination once it is for a lifetime so these are the other countries also uh, uh, in africa basically in whole of africa if you are traveling and or if you are traveling in south america 
could be Bolivia, Brazil, Colombia, Ecuador, French Guinea, or any country you are traveling to Peru, Panama, Venezuela. Wherever you are traveling in South America, Africa, you need to have vaccinations, health regulations. So this is the job of a travel company to inform you that uh, you need to get vaccination done in case you plan to travel to these places through them. So even for health regulations for leaving India, there is as such there is no health regulation required by Indian government on passengers leaving India. Persons leaving for a yellow liver infected area, as I said, they are advised on the, in their own interest to get themselves vaccinated and to be in possession of valid yellow fever vaccination certificates before they leave the country. So there are some government hospitals where you can go and take this vaccinations. So persons uh, exempted are uh, maybe in uh, exempted from production of yellow certificates are infants below age of six, any person suffering from some chronic illness due to which he has poor resistance and thereby exempted from being vaccinated or the crew of and passengers of any aircraft transiting to an airport located in yellow fever in bacteria providing the health of provided that the health officer is satisfied the such person remain within the airport premises during the period of stay so vaccinations as i said yellow fever now it is not for 10 years it is for lifetime once you've got it done so it is there forever likewise cholera which is a certificate valid for six months bringing six days after primary vaccination vaccination now next thing which the companies have to inform uh, about the airport tax to the tourists that many countries charge a Levi airport tax for passengers departing from the airports information regarding each country's airport tax can be found in travel information manual most countries require this tax to be collected in the ticket itself Hence, this information is also be included in fields pricing function of crs however this is the job of the travel company to inform the tourists that they are being charged for the airport tax if any and uh, the uh, tourists must be kept in loop about this travel insurance is very mandatory especially for some countries you cannot get a visa only if you do not have the travel insurance for some countries you can do without the insurance but it is always in the best interest of the tourists to get a travel insurance done thus it's the job of the travel uh, agency to guide their guests and to tell them uh, about the importance of taking a travel insurance in case any exigency happens with them so they should always tell them that it is always advisable to carry travel insurance while traveling abroad especially uh, and uh, as i said it is mandatory for many countries and they cover special risks associated with travel so it should be pre-purchased and it must be remain valid. This is very important for the travel company to tell them that they must get the travel insurance done for the complete duration of the trip. So travel insurance covers risk against loss of money, travel delays, medical and related expenses, personal accident, luggage, personal effects and money loss, etc. Hospitalization, etc. Another job of the travel company is to inform the tourists about the customs also. Customs is responsible for collecting and safeguarding custom duties and for controlling the flow of goods. So there is a duty free allowance in which you don't have to pay any custom. But they, uh, if you have nothing to uh, declare, then you can pass through green channel. But if you are carrying any heavy dutable items, you need to pass through the red channel. So as a travel agency, you must inform your clients, your tourists to uh, pass through the right channel if they are carrying uh, or not carrying the uh, items. Uh, depending upon what they are carrying. So, uh, the, there is a limit to which uh, the allowance is free unless there is duty. So, as a travel agent, you must inform your tourists about these things, especially the first time travelers who are unaware about these things, uh, about these hitches while uh, traveling abroad. So, airport information is also to be given by the travel agency. This may be related to the reporting time, like it is three hours prior for the international flight and 90 minutes for the domestic flight so the travel company needs to inform its clients about the reporting time so that they do not miss on the flights the terminal information many airports have very huge terminals let's take an example of IG airport which has T3 the international then we have T1 1D 1C with uh, we have so many terminals domestic international so the client might get confused so you have to tell them exactly about the, the terminal, which terminal they have to come, what are the facilities available at the airport. That is also the job of the travel agency to tell its clients and the check-in registered baggage, the cabin baggage carry-on, etc. 
so there are currency regulations also and detailed account of currency regulations is mentioned in travel information manual details of uh, like import and export so this is the job of a travel agency to help with the get the foreign exchange in case a tourist is traveling to a foreign country and uh, they should help the uh, the clients to get uh, currency foreign exchange uh, done and in case uh, uh, they uh, if, if they do not uh, have their own department they may help them to procure from some other travel agency and they must also tell them about the concept of basic travel quota as to how much one can carry with him when he is traveling abroad for business travelers no annual limit is there under fema act uh, that is foreign exchange uh, management act they are entitled to purchase up to $25000 for each trip even if they are traveling for just a day so the documents are required for btq or valid visa and ticket so they are like the business travelers also so the travel company must itself be aware of these rules and it must also pass on these uh, rules to the clients also even if they have the business clients then there are special permits if you are traveling uh, through a travel com- company to a place which in which permits are required so there like when in india there are permits required due to security reasons or due to preserve the remote areas with pristine beauty and to maintain the culture of that area so there are special permits in our country also so as a travel agency you must inform your tourist inform your clients about the special permits if you are traveling to jnk if you are traveling in certain parts of uh, jnk if you are traveling to uh, andaman and nicobar islands special nicobar you have to take the permit and you are even in north eastern parts of india you need to take the permits so the permits are of different types these special permits are of different types so this permitting issuing organization ministry of home affairs uh, with which is the apex board responsible for granting permits to restricted zones or the, even the indian missions abroad they also uh, give the permits issue them fros that is foreign regional registration officers or foreign registration officers immigration officers officials of government also authorized to grant permits travel in group of two or more no individual permits but only issued in extreme cases by the ministry of home affairs so we have prote- protected rest- or restricted area permits it's a permit for foreigners to visit certain places issued for 10 days with 7 days extension you also have the inner line permit which is for foreigners and indians also who not the domicile of that place to visit politically sensitive border areas like of ladakh particular parts of northeast northeastern parts of sikkim and they are issued by the district magistrates so we have restricted uh, protected uh, areas in our country also then for which you are required to carry permits with you if you are tourist and if you are traveling to a travel agency then it is the responsibility of the travel agency to arrange for the permits if you are traveling to places through them like sikkim uttaranchal parts of uttaranchal parts of arunachal pradesh border areas of jnk areas of himachal pradesh areas of rajasthan and andaman and nicobar islands lakshadweep islands etc so special permits for sikkim like uh special tracking permits are there permit for two days instead be available at the check post or border point and also at offices in darjeeling and siliguri and you need to carry pa- uh, copies of passport photocopies and visa details and two passports and photographs also so there are different requirements so by different states uh, that must be known to the travel agent so that he can pass on the right information to the tourist so that they don't have to wait there reaching at that point waste their time uh waiting for the permit especially during the season time there are long queues for tourists and they are they, have, they are in the queues the cars are waiting that traffic jam and their whole your whole itinerary can get disturbed if you have not arranged for a permit on time or if you are not even aware of it so that is the job of the very important job of the travel agency for so traveling through them to these places it, it, they must inform you they must facilitate you with all these things uh like as i said uh, the this permits So other facilitation functions are immigration or uh, basically immigration is the job uh, of immigration officers who are posted at the airport so while you are traveling abroad you have to pass through the immigrations after check in you pass through the immigrations and immigration uh, officers uh, they basically uh, take your passport and they ask you certain questions like your purpose of travel for many days you are traveling to another country and uh, once they find they don't suspect you and they once they feel that uh, you are genuine so they they endorse the stamp on your passport then they allow you to pass to uh, to the these uh, to the international borders 
uh, and then uh, when you reach that country also so there also you have to pass through the immigration so they will only allow you to enter the ultimate authority to enter or exit the country rests with the immigration officers so they will, when they find you uh, when they don't suspect you then only they will permit you to go through that so immigration is very important so in that you have to pass through the immigration you have to pass through the customs you have to know your know your baggage rules this is all the job of the travel agency to inform its uh, 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 to inform its clients about the uh, various procedures involved especially for the first time travelers who are unaware of about these procedures uh, th these may sound very alien to such to uh, travelers so we uh, as a travel agency responsible travel company it must prepare its travelers for visiting abroad it must tell them what are the things they need to know before they travel likewise we have the baggage also the baggage also has different rules and these uh, rules will vary from different airline to airline basically this one check in baggage which is also called registered baggage which is checked in at the check in counter at the airport of the respective airline and uh, it is generally uh, 20 to 25 kg for uh, international like its economy is 20 uh, cap, uh, the business class is 30 and first class is 40 kg and uh, if you are travelling uh, on, on cabin baggage is 5 to 7 kg for domestic airlines it will always vary and even uh, as I said 20, 30, 40 that is the basic rule but again this will vary from airlines to airlines so the uh, airlines uh, on which the travel agent has booked you on it must check the baggage uh, which is allocated which is allowed and it is generally also mentioned in the ticket uh, 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 in which through which you are going in the e-ticket so you must check the baggage which is allowed and uh, or in the travel agency staff must also apprise you about the baggage rules so that you don't face any issues later like the sharp things you should not be carried in the cabin baggage all the liquid stuff should also not be carried in the cabin baggage everything these things should be checked in in the check-in baggage so these rules need to be informed prior no dangerous items should be carried but this is the job of the travel agency to inform its travelers this is one of the facilitation functions now, besides the above mentioned functions, familiarization trips, fam trips are also important to be arranged by the travel company so that the uh, employees can go there and they can have a feel of that destination and then when they come back, they can sell that destination to the clients. So, fam trips are also very important for the, uh, sometimes they are also given to the media people because when they sell that destination, so that has more uh, weightage, uh, more importance and the people, uh, they have more viewership and more readership so people are interested to tra uh, travel to those places so you may find a space of your travel company in a magazine or in a, or in a TV channel so fam trips are equally very important uh, job of the travel agency they must uh, keep organizing fam trips for its employees, not only for the employees but also for the media people and the marketing and promotion material of any uh, package tour which they are doing that's very important so till now we have discussed the what is uh, how a travel agency uh, takes care of the facilitation procedure how what are the various functions involved of the travel agency in facilitation be it organizing a passport for the traveler be it organizing a uh, visa helping him to get the visa granted by the concerned embassy or the consulate or be it uh, informing the uh, clients about the health regulations, be it informing them about the importance of travel insurance, be it informing them about the permits in, in case of the countries in which they are traveling to, like uh, the states or the countries where you are traveling to, or be it the baggage rules or the airport information. All these are very, very important uh, things, immigration, customs, all these are important aspects of travel, the currency regulations. The first time travelers may not be aware of all these tra things especially while traveling abroad and this is the duty of the travel agency to facilitate uh, the travel in every way and help them uh, give the correct information authentic information and the most updated information to the clients thank you